Every small town has its stories. Whispers of the unexplainable and the eerie tend to float around, but not in my town. We were the poster image of normalcy, until that night when my sense of reality was thoroughly jumbled. I remember it was a quiet evening. The clock had struck nine, the crickets were humming their night song, and the sky was a blanket of deep velvet speckled with stars. I was sitting on my back porch, the cool wind carrying the scent of damp earth, a byproduct of the evening's light rain. It was just another night in suburban tranquility, or so it seemed. That's when I saw it, an odd flicker of light. It caught my peripheral vision, just a quick dash against the starry backdrop. Startled, I turned, squinting into the darkness. At first, I dismissed it, assuming my eyes were playing tricks on me. But then, it appeared again, more prominently. This time, it was undeniably real, an ethereal dance of lights, moving in the sky with a sort of orchestrated chaos. It dashed across the sky, defying logic and laws of gravity with its sharp turns and high-speed maneuvers. I remember blinking hard, rubbing my eyes, trying to shake off the spectacle as some visual delusion, yet it persisted. Intrigue soon replaced my initial shock. I found myself drawn towards this enigma, watching it for what seemed like hours. It performed a ballet of sorts, the lights twisting and turning at impossible angles. The spectacle was both beautiful and disconcerting, shattering my small-town tranquility with something completely foreign, completely alien. Every fiber of my being told me that I was witnessing something extraordinary. The lights were not of this world. They had a strange rhythm, a peculiar hum that I could feel resonating within me. It wasn't a plane, wasn't a helicopter, and certainly not a drone. I've seen those, and they don't move like that. No, this was different, otherworldly. After an hour or so, it disappeared as suddenly as it had appeared, leaving me in a state of bewildered awe. I stood there, frozen on my porch, staring into the now empty sky, where the strange lights had danced just moments ago. Questions swarmed my mind like bees to a hive. What was it? Why was it here? Could it be? I shook my head, laughing off the ludicrous idea taking root in my mind. UFOs? Aliens? That was the stuff of movies and conspiracy theories, not of my quiet life. Yet, as I turned to head back inside, I felt a chill run down my spine. The night was no longer ordinary, and something told me that my life wouldn't be either. Little did I know, this was just the beginning, the opening act of a series of events that would shake my perception of reality to its very core. But for that night, as I finally retired to bed, I remember looking back out of the window one last time. The sky was as it always was, calm, serene, hiding its secrets behind a veil of darkness. As I drifted off to sleep, I couldn't help but wonder if I'd dream about the strange lights. Unbeknownst to me, the reality that was to unfold was scarier than any dream I could have imagined. The next day was surreal. I found myself torn between the logical part of my brain, which wanted to dismiss the strange lights as a trick of the mind, and the part of me that couldn't forget their alien dance. The sun shone as usual, kids played in their yards, birds chirped in the trees. Yet, under this veneer of normalcy, my world had shifted on its axis. As night fell, I felt an odd mixture of trepidation and anticipation. Would I see the lights again? Was I ready to face the inexplicable? There was an electric tension in the air, a stillness that felt as if the world was holding its breath with me. The clock ticked away, its monotonous rhythm the only sound piercing the silence of the night. I sat there out on the porch again, waiting. Each passing minute felt agonizingly slow, dragging my expectations through the muck of disappointment. It wasn't until the clock hands united at twelve, the witching hour, that it happened. Once again, the calm night sky erupted into a spectacle of moving lights. They returned with a kind of punctuality that was uncanny, their movements as bewildering as before, their sharp turns and impossible speeds, their rhythm. It was all exactly as I remembered. I watched, entranced and terrified. The lights seemed to pulse, drawing me into their rhythm. They moved with a purpose, communicating something I couldn't comprehend, yet felt intimately. I felt my heart beating in sync with their dance, as if pulled by an unseen force. This display went on for an hour, repeating the eerie ballet from the previous night. It was as if they were trying to communicate, to tell a story that I was too naive to understand. As the hour concluded, 
the lights vanished abruptly, leaving the sky to its silent, lonely vastness. I was left reeling, my mind teetering on the precipice of the unbelievable. The peculiar punctuality of their appearance made it even harder to dismiss as a hallucination or a fluke. A nagging feeling told me that this was something significant. But what did it mean? Why was it happening? The questions were numerous, but the answers were none. I headed back inside, my body heavy with the weight of the unknown. The house felt empty and enormous, each creak and groan amplified by my heightened senses. Every shadow held potential threats. Every silence screamed louder than noise. I felt a strange sense of vulnerability, like I was a part of something much bigger than myself, and infinitely more frightening. As I lay in bed that night, the darkness felt more profound. Every tick of the clock echoed through the silence, marking the relentless march of time towards another midnight. A part of me wanted the lights to be a mere figment of my imagination, a trick of the light, or a temporary madness. But another part, the part that felt touched by their extraterrestrial grace, yearned for their return. I closed my eyes, but sleep was elusive. The dance of the lights played on the insides of my eyelids, drawing patterns of the unknown. Little did I know that the coming nights were about to plunge me into a darkness far more profound, into a reality far stranger than these midnight dances in the sky. The third day arrived with an uncanny sense of normalcy. The sun was out casting long shadows as the town awoke to another day. It felt oddly mundane in the light of the bizarre phenomena I had been witnessing. Even as I went through the motions of my daily routine, I couldn't shake off the undercurrent of anxiety and expectation, a suspense that hung in the air, unspoken. Daylight waned, and dusk painted the sky in hues of orange and purple, hinting at the impending night. I waited, my heart pounding against my ribcage, as if trying to break free. An unsettling cocktail of dread and anticipation was brewing in my gut. I positioned myself on the porch as I had for the past two nights, eyes glued to the heavens. Minutes turned into hours, and the sky turned from twilight blue to the deep black of night. The world was silent around me, save for the occasional hoot of an owl or the rustle of wind through the trees. Yet, as the clock struck midnight, there was nothing. No swirling lights, no celestial ballet. The sky remained just that, a sky. The lack of activity felt anticlimactic, like the silence after a riveting symphony. The void left by the lights was deafening, filled with a plethora of unanswered questions. I found myself staring at the empty space where they should have been, a strange sense of loss washing over me. An entire night passed, the moon making its journey across the starlit canvas but there was no sign of the lights. The absence was more bewildering than their presence had ever been. The question echoed in my mind, what happened? With the arrival of dawn, I found myself grappling with a fresh wave of confusion. The lights had become a constant over the last two days, an extraordinary part of my otherwise ordinary life. Their sudden disappearance left me feeling disoriented. Doubts began to creep in, whispering insidiously at the back of my mind. Was it all just a dream? An elaborate hallucination? Was my mind playing tricks on me? Yet I knew what I had seen. I had witnessed it not once, but twice. It was as real as the earth beneath my feet or the stars above my head. I couldn't have imagined it all. Days turned into nights, and nights into days. Yet there was no sign of the mysterious lights. Each night I found myself on the porch, searching the sky for any signs but was met only with the ordinary spectacle of the night sky. Even as a sense of normalcy returned to my life, I couldn't forget. The memory of the lights, their uncanny movements, their midnight appearances, all lingered like a specter, refusing to be banished. The experience had marked me, leaving an indelible imprint that was hard to ignore. As I prepared for another ordinary night, I couldn't shake off the feeling that the calm was deceptive, a precursor to a storm. Little did I know how right I was. The storm was coming, and it was more terrifying than anything I could have imagined. The events of the past few days had left me in a state of constant vigilance, even when everything appeared ordinary. I had spent the subsequent nights in an anxious anticipation, eyes peeled on the sky, waiting for the mysterious lights to make their return. But they didn't. Instead, the nights were eerily normal, 
devoid of any otherworldly spectacle. One night, as I was about to retreat to the deceptive comfort of my bed, it happened. The silence of the night was shattered by a sudden commotion on the roof. It sounded like footsteps, a hurried frantic pacing that made my heart lurch in my chest. I stood frozen, my ears straining to catch any hint of the sounds. They were distinct, not something you'd mistake for the house settling or the wind blowing. It was as if someone, or something, was walking on the roof. Just as I was trying to make sense of it, another sound pierced the silence, a distinct scratching at my back door. It was like nails on a chalkboard, making me cringe in discomfort. My blood ran cold, and a shiver ran down my spine. Panicked, I immediately dialed the police, explaining the situation in hurried breaths. The dispatcher assured me that a patrol car was on its way, urging me to stay on the line and keep myself safe. With the phone clenched tightly in my hand, I locked all the doors and windows, casting nervous glances towards the back door. The minutes stretched out like hours as I waited for the police to arrive. The sounds continued intermittently, serving as a chilling reminder of the unidentified presence at my home. I felt like a cornered animal, every instinct screaming at me to run, yet I had nowhere to go. Finally, the flashing lights of a police car cut through the darkness, followed by the reassuring figure of a uniformed officer. I hurried to open the front door, relief washing over me. The sounds had ceased by then, leaving nothing but a chilling silence. I watched as they inspected the premises, their flashlights cutting through the darkness, their expressions serious. They checked the roof, the backyard, and the back door. There was no sign of any intruder. Probably some animal, one of them suggested, but his eyes held a hint of uncertainty. They left after a while, advising me to call again if I heard anything unusual. I was left alone once more, the silence of my home feeling oppressive. I checked all the locks again, a newfound fear taking root in my heart. Was this connected to the lights? Was it just a coincidence? My mind was a whirlpool of questions, answers far out of reach. As I crawled into bed that night, the events of the day replayed in my mind. I was on edge, every creak of the house making me jump. Sleep was elusive, the darkness of my room seeming to harbor unseen threats. My nights had become a theater of fear and uncertainty, my home a stage for the bizarre. I longed for the mundane, for the ordinary, for the peaceful nights before the lights appeared. But as I was about to find out, the play was far from over and the next act would bring with it a terror beyond anything I had experienced so far. In the aftermath of the night's events, my sleep was plagued by nightmares, the sounds of footsteps and scratches echoing in my subconscious. Waking up felt like a reprieve, but the harsh light of day did little to quell my anxiety. As night fell, an ominous sense of dread settled over me. I was filled with a chilling certainty that the darkness would bring with it yet another strange event. Despite my fear, I found myself drawn to the backyard, curiosity overriding my sense of self-preservation. Out there, bathed in the glow of the moon and the backyard lights, everything seemed eerily serene. I kept scanning the shadows, my senses on high alert, when a movement in the corner of my eye drew my attention. Behind the old oak tree, I spotted a figure, tall, thin, unmistakably humanoid. My breath hitched my heart pounding in my chest like a frantic drum. I squinted to get a better look, and that's when I saw them, its eyes. They were disproportionately large, terrifying, reflecting the light in a way that made them seem to glow. The sight was chillingly uncanny, an entity that was clearly not human, standing in the shadows of my own backyard. It felt as though those eyes were looking straight into my soul, seeing beyond my fear, reaching into the deepest corners of my being. Almost instinctively, I pulled out my phone, intending to capture this unearthly visitor in a photograph. But just as I raised it, the backyard lights blinked out, plunging everything into darkness. My phone flickered for a moment before the screen turned black, the battery drained to zero in an instant. In a blind panic, I stumbled back into the house, locking the door behind me. The pitch-black darkness inside felt like a monstrous entity, swallowing me whole. I tried turning on the lights, but the switch flicked uselessly. The power was out. It felt as though I was being isolated, cut off from the world by this alien entity. I made my way through the dark house, double-checking all the doors and windows, ensuring they were locked. 
a sense of vulnerability washed over me, a feeling of being a prey in my own home, hunted by something beyond my understanding. Once I had made sure all possible entries were secure, I retreated to the safety of my room. My mind was a whirlwind of terror and confusion, the image of the creature seared into my memory. The house was eerily silent, the usual nighttime hum of appliances absent due to the power outage. I found myself straining to listen, dreading the possibility of another sound breaking the silence. Just when I thought the night couldn't get any more terrifying, I heard it. The sound of the doorknob rattling. Fear gripped me, my blood turning to ice. I waited, my breath hitched, praying for the sounds to stop. As I was soon to discover, my night of terror was far from over. The alien visitor was not done with me yet, and its next move would leave me more terrified than ever before. The unsettling noise of the doorknob rattling finally ceased, leaving behind a silence so profound it felt as though the world itself was holding its breath. Each tick of the clock echoed in the quiet of the house, amplifying my sense of isolation. I forced myself to move, the need to ensure my safety overpowering my fear. Every creak of the wooden floor beneath me seemed deafening in the silence. I checked each room, a creeping dread uncoiling in my stomach as I peered into the shadows, half expecting to see the creature lurking there. Finding nothing, I started towards the back of the house, the image of the humanoid figure from the backyard still vivid in my mind. I reached the kitchen, its windows providing a clear view of the backyard and the old oak tree. I dared a glance outside, praying for it to be empty. But it wasn't. The figure was there, standing behind the window, its terrifying eyes staring straight back at me. I froze, my heart hammering against my ribs, my breath hitching in my throat. It was real. Unmistakably, horrifyingly real. Before I could react, a loud booming sound echoed from the backyard, making the house shake. The figure vanished from the window, leaving behind a chilling emptiness. The sudden disappearance was as terrifying as its presence. Shaking, I dared another look out the window. In the distance, behind the trees, a bright light descended. It was so blinding I had to shield my eyes. My mind immediately conjured the image of the strange lights I had seen in the sky just nights before. The connection was unmistakable. Then, as suddenly as it had appeared, the light shot back into the sky, disappearing from view. I watched, awestruck, as it bolted into the stars, leaving behind an ordinary night sky. A sense of disbelief washed over me. Had I really seen what I thought I saw? Just as I was grappling with my reality, the lights in the house flickered back to life, the appliances humming back into operation. My phone beeped back to life, the battery fully charged. The return to normalcy felt jarring, a stark contrast to the otherworldly events of the night. I found myself standing in the middle of my kitchen, questioning my sanity. Was I dreaming? Was I hallucinating? But I knew, deep down, that what I had witnessed was real. I considered calling the police again, but I hesitated. What could I tell them? That I saw a UFO? A humanoid creature with terrifying eyes? I could already hear their disbelief. Could already see their skeptical faces. They wouldn't believe me. I hardly believed it myself. So I did nothing. I locked all the doors and windows again, crawled into bed, but sleep was far from my grasp. My mind was a jumbled mess filled with too many questions and no answers. Little did I know, my ordeal was not over. The strange events had only just begun, and they were about to take an even more horrifying turn. The nightmare I was living was about to intensify, threatening my sanity and everything I held to be true. Following the chilling encounters, I entered a state of numbed shock. I passed the days mechanically, every routine task seeming surreal. Nightfall would bring with it a sense of dread, but the mysterious lights and the terrifying figure did not return. It was as if they had never been there, leaving behind no trace but the scars on my psyche. But even as the external quiet returned, my internal world began to unravel. Sleep, once my sanctuary, became a torment. Night after night, I was visited by horrendous nightmares. The dreams were vivid and frighteningly real. They always started the same way, with the lights in the sky. Then the creature would appear, its soul-piercing eyes staring into mine. It would stretch its hand towards me, a silent invitation or perhaps a threat I could never tell. Each night, the dream would take a different terrifying turn. Some nights, I'd find myself aboard their craft, 
the alien figures standing around me, their eyes devoid of any emotion. Other nights the figure would be inside my house, lurking in the shadows, its eyes the only discernible feature. I would wake up drenched in sweat, heart pounding in my chest, the echoes of the nightmares still lingering. Sleep was no longer a reprieve, but a plunge into a new kind of horror. I tried to make sense of these dreams. Were they mere products of my terrified mind, conjured by the fear and stress of the past few days? Or were they something more, a warning, a message? I began to dread the nights, the thought of sleep filling me with fear. But exhaustion would eventually win, and I'd slip back into the terrifying realm of my nightmares. Each morning, I'd wake up with the memory of the horrifying dreams, their images burned into my mind. I considered seeking professional help, but the fear of disbelief, of ridicule, held me back. I was trapped in my own personal horror, a prisoner to my fear and anxiety. The isolation felt crippling, the feeling of being alone in my experience, unbearable. With each passing day, I became a shadow of my former self. The vibrant man I once was had been replaced by a scared, anxious insomniac. I could hardly recognize myself in the mirror, the dark circles under my eyes and the pallor of my skin a testament to my internal turmoil. Despite the terror, I kept my ordeal to myself, the weight of my silence adding to my distress. I was adrift in a sea of fear and uncertainty, with no land in sight. Little did I know my nightmare was far from over. The worst was yet to come, the horror about to escalate in ways I could never have imagined. This was just the beginning of my terrifying journey into the unknown, a journey that would change my life forever. Desperation drove me to seek out answers. I turned to the internet, trawling through countless articles and discussion boards dedicated to UFO sightings and extraterrestrial encounters. I searched for stories similar to mine, for any hint of understanding or validation. My hunt led me to obscure blogs and anonymous forums places where people like me gathered to share their experiences. As I read their stories, a strange mix of comfort and horror washed over me. Comfort, because I was not alone, and horror, because their experiences only confirmed the reality of mine. I also sought out scientific explanations. I read articles on sleep paralysis, hallucinations, even psychological breakdowns. I visited doctors, underwent physical and neurological exams, all in a futile attempt to find a rational explanation. But every test came back clear, and every doctor shrugged, unable to provide a definitive answer. In my quest for answers, I stumbled upon a community of ufologists who suggested the use of surveillance cameras. Desperate and willing to try anything, I installed a network of cameras around the house, covering every possible angle. The monitors in my study became a constant companion, the live feed serving as both reassurance and a reminder of my fears. Yet, as days turned into weeks, my cameras captured nothing but the ordinary. No strange lights, no eerie figures. The activity seemed to have ceased as mysteriously as it had started. The silence was both a relief and a source of frustration. Relief because the terror seemed to be over, and frustration because it offered no closure, no answers. Nightmares continued to haunt my sleep their intensity unmitigated by the apparent calm. Each night I'd wake up, heart pounding, images of the terrifying figure etched in my mind. I began to record these dreams, jotting down every detail in a notebook. It was an attempt to find patterns, to decipher any hidden message they might hold. In my loneliness, I considered reaching out to the online community, to share my story as others had done. But fear held me back, the fear of being labeled ridiculed or dismissed. The anonymity of the internet offered a measure of safety, but it also held the potential for mockery. The thought of turning my traumatic experience into a spectacle for skeptics was unbearable. Through this ordeal, my life had changed dramatically. I had become a recluse, a prisoner in my own home, spending my days in search of answers and my nights in the grip of terror. The vibrant, outgoing man I once was seemed like a distant memory a ghost of a life that now seemed unattainable. I was living a nightmare, my life dominated by fear and uncertainty. And as the days went by, my despair only deepened, the lack of answers compounding my anxiety. But I had no idea that the real horror was yet to come. The events that were about to unfold would take my ordeal to a whole new level, 
challenging everything I knew about myself and the world around me. My life had settled into a dreary routine of fear, anxiety, and sleepless nights. Each day was a mirror of the one before, the monotony only broken by the terror of my dreams. I was a man on the edge, teetering between hope and despair. One day, almost a month after the last sighting, everything changed. It was a calm night, the moonlight casting long shadows across my backyard. I was in my study, my eyes glued to the surveillance monitors. The house was quiet, the only sound the low hum of the computer and my own breathing. My eyes were heavy with fatigue, my mind numb from the relentless tension. That's when I saw it. A flicker of movement on one of the screens caught my attention. My heart rate spiked as I quickly focused on the monitor. It was the backyard feed. The old oak tree was bathed in an unnatural glow, an eerie light that sent a chill down my spine. A familiar dread washed over me. They had returned. Almost in a trance, I watched as a figure appeared from behind the tree. The same humanoid figure, its eyes glowing in the camera feed. The sight was terrifyingly familiar, a chilling replay of my first encounter. I sprang from my chair, a sense of urgency propelling me towards the back door. I needed to see this with my own eyes, to confirm that this was not some technical glitch. As I stepped outside, I was met with a sight that took my breath away. Hovering above the tree was the UFO, its lights flickering in a rhythmic pattern. The figure stood beneath it, its gaze locked onto me. I could feel the weight of its stare, the same soul-piercing gaze that had haunted my dreams. In that moment, time seemed to stand still. All the fear, all the confusion of the past weeks culminated in this one encounter. It was real, as real as the terror that clutched my heart. I turned and ran back into the house, locking the door behind me. I ran to the phone, my hands trembling, my mind filled with thoughts of calling the police. But I hesitated, the phone heavy in my hands. Would they believe me? Would they dismiss me as a deluded fool? As I stood there, undecided and terrified, the power went out. The house plunged into darkness, and my phone died in my hand. I was alone in the dark with them, just as I had been on that first night. The dread was overwhelming, but this time, I was not paralyzed. The terrifying encounters, the sleepless nights, the relentless anxiety, they had changed me. I was no longer just a terrified victim. I was a man determined to face his fear. I didn't know it then, but that night marked a turning point. The encounters were about to take a more terrifying turn, pushing me to the brink, but they would also lead me to a deeper understanding, an insight into the incredible reality I was caught in. Little did I know, my nightmare was just beginning. In the pitch black darkness of my home, every sound felt amplified, the silence punctuated by my quickened breaths and pounding heart. Outside, the uncanny glow of the UFO lit up my backyard, a glaring contrast to the darkness I was enveloped in. As I stood there, phone dead in my hand, I felt an undeniable pull to the back window, a strange compulsion to confront my fear. Tentatively, I edged towards the window, my heart pounding with every step. I peered through the glass and there it was, the alien figure under the radiant glow of the UFO. It stood still, eyes fixed towards the house, towards me. An icy fear gripped me as those haunting eyes met mine. In an instant, the backyard erupted with a deafening boom. I recoiled, shielding my eyes from a blinding light that consumed everything. When I dared to look again, the creature was gone, the UFO rising swiftly into the night sky. A trail of light lingered for a moment before disappearing completely, leaving an eerie silence in its wake. With the departure of the UFO, power returned. My phone buzzed to life, and the lights flickered on, casting away the suffocating darkness. I stood there, stunned and shaken. The afterimage of the luminous UFO burned into my retinas. The echo of the sonic boom still rang in my ears, a cruel reminder of the horrifying reality I'd just experienced. I sank to the floor, my knees unable to support me. Every fiber of my being was screaming, consumed by the terror of the moment. The sheer magnitude of what I'd witnessed, the absolute otherworldliness of it, was too much to process. I was living a nightmare that I couldn't wake up from. I longed to share my experience, to find someone who would believe my story. But I knew the likelihood of anyone accepting such an outrageous truth was slim. The price of speaking up felt too high. The fear of being ridiculed, 
of being seen as a delusional, hysterical fool, was more than I could bear. I was trapped in my terror, isolated and alone. That night I barely slept. Every time I closed my eyes I saw the figure, its eyes boring into mine and the UFO, its radiant light casting long, daunting shadows. The sleep that claimed me was plagued by nightmares, echoes of the horrifying event. The following morning I woke up, feeling exhausted and unsettled. But amidst the fear and anxiety, a new emotion emerged, determination. I was no longer just a passive victim. I was a witness to something monumental, something terrifying and incredible at the same time. I knew then that I couldn't keep living like this, plagued by fear and haunted by the unknown. I had to take control of my life to confront this alien mystery head on. I didn't know what awaited me or where this journey would lead, but I knew I had to try. I had to seek answers, not just for my peace of mind, but to validate the reality I was living. I was about to embark on a path that would change everything, a path that led to the heart of the unknown. The nightmares began to intensify. Every night was the same. I would fall into a restless sleep only to be plunged into the same horrifying sequence of events. The encounter, the figure, the UFO, all replaying with a visceral clarity that left me gasping for breath. Each dream ended the same way, with the figure's haunting gaze and a bone-rattling boom that shook me awake. These nightmares became my nightly torment, a prison I couldn't escape. I tried everything to stave them off, sleep aids, meditation, even hypnosis, but nothing worked. The terror was too deeply ingrained, the images too vivid to erase. Every morning I woke up exhausted, my sleep offering no respite from the fear. My life had become a constant state of anxiety and terror, my days filled with apprehension and my nights with nightmares. The world outside with its normalcy and routine seemed like a distant memory. I was trapped in a reality of my own, a reality dictated by an unfathomable extraterrestrial encounter. As the nightmares continued, I began to notice a pattern. They weren't random, but a replay of the encounters. Each dream was a continuation of the previous one, as if someone, or something, was guiding me through the events. It was a disturbing realization, one that brought with it a new wave of fear. Was the figure controlling my dreams? Was it trying to communicate with me, or worse, manipulate me? But then, something changed. One night, I had a dream that was different from the rest. In this dream, the figure didn't just stand under the tree. It walked towards the house, towards me. It raised a hand, palm outstretched, as if offering a silent greeting, or a warning. When I woke, I felt an overwhelming sense of dread. It was a foreboding premonition, a warning that something was about to happen. I couldn't shake off the feeling and as the days passed, the anticipation became unbearable. Every night I expected it. The figure, walking towards my house, ready to cross the boundary it hadn't before. The surveillance cameras offered no comfort, only increasing my apprehension. I lived in constant fear, waiting for the impending confrontation. Finally I decided to act. I couldn't live in this constant state of terror, waiting for the unknown. I sold my house, packed up my belongings, and moved far away. I hoped that distance would provide a respite, that it would break the hold these experiences had on me. But as I settled into my new home, the relief I hoped for didn't come. Despite the distance, despite the change in environment, the nightmares persisted. They followed me, a ghost of my past that I couldn't escape. The figure, the UFO, they had become a part of me, a horrifying memory that refused to fade. I was a prisoner to my experiences, trapped in a nightmare that seemed to have no end. My life had changed irrevocably, and as I faced my uncertain future, I couldn't help but wonder, would I ever be free from this terror? I've been living in my new house for a few months now, and on the surface, things seem to have returned to normal. But the reality is far from it. I've managed to forge a routine around the relentless nightmares, a makeshift coping mechanism for the terror that greets me each night. Each morning is a struggle, a fight against the debilitating fatigue that clouds my mind. Every night is a surrender, a reluctant descent into the waiting arms of terror. There are moments when I catch myself staring out the window, looking at the night sky with a fearful anticipation. Every flicker of light, every shooting star sends a shiver down my spine. It's a cruel paradox. The same sky that I once found comforting now only evokes fear. 
It's a grim reminder of the encounters, a stark testament to the reality that has come to define my existence. Despite the hardships, I've resolved to endure. There's a resilience within me that I hadn't acknowledged before, a strength that was born from this terrifying ordeal. I've survived the encounters, the move, the isolation, and I'll survive the nightmares too. It's a testament to the indomitable human spirit, our innate ability to adapt and endure even in the face of the most daunting challenges. People often speak about encounters with the unexplainable, the supernatural, the extraterrestrial. They talk about it with a sense of fascination, a curious intrigue that borders on excitement. But those who've lived it know the truth. It's not an adventure, it's a nightmare. It's a terrifying journey that uproots your life, leaving you scarred and forever changed. And yet, despite everything, I continue to live, to fight, to exist. There's a strange comfort in acceptance, in knowing that you can't change the past, but can shape your future. I don't know if I'll ever find the answers I seek, or if the nightmares will ever stop. I don't know if the figure will return, or if the UFO sightings will resume. There's a lot I don't know, and perhaps a lot I'll never understand. But for now, I'm content to live my life, one day at a time. I've come to terms with my reality, with the terrifying experiences that have become a part of my identity. I carry them with me, not as a badge of victimhood, but as a symbol of survival. And in the quiet moments, when the night sky is clear and the stars are shining brightly, I find myself looking up, not with fear, but with a strange sense of connection. After all, the universe is vast, and we are but tiny specks in the grand scheme of things. My experiences have taught me humility and respect for the unknown. I don't know what the future holds. All I know is that I've survived, and as long as I keep waking up each morning, I'll continue to fight and continue to live. For in the face of the unknown, that's all one can really do. Survive, endure, and hope for a better tomorrow. So here I am, a man changed by his encounters with the unknown, living his life one nightmare at a time. It's a strange existence, but it's my reality. And despite everything, I wouldn't change a thing. After all, it's the experiences that shape us. And this experience has made me who I am today. From the moment Emily and I decided on our week-long camping trip to the Pacific Northwest, there was an air of excitement. We'd spent the past month meticulously planning every detail, making sure we had all the necessary equipment, and checking the weather forecast multiple times. Every free evening was spent poring over topographic maps of the region, imagining what each contour and feature would look like in real life. As much as we craved the unexpected adventures the wild had to offer, we also knew the importance of preparation. The night before our departure, sleep was elusive. I remember laying there, my heart pounding with anticipation, my mind filled with a vibrant cocktail of emotions. Excitement, anticipation, a pinch of anxiety, but mostly an exhilarating sense of adventure. The morning was a blur of packing, last-minute checks, and the familiar bittersweet pang of leaving the city's comfort behind. But as the urban landscape faded in our rearview mirror, replaced by the breathtaking wilderness, all of our doubts melted away. The first part of the journey was on a relatively smooth road, with grand evergreens and majestic mountain ranges keeping us company. The air was fresher, cleaner, carrying the delicate scent of pine and damp earth, so different from the city's stale, polluted breath. We drove in companionable silence, each absorbed in the spectacle unfolding before us. As the road started to narrow and wind its way up the mountains, the majestic green canopy enveloped us, and civilization felt like a distant memory. The air seemed to sing with an ancient song, the chorus of the wilderness, filled with the rustle of leaves and the whispers of the wind. It felt like stepping into another world, a realm untouched by human interference, raw and beautiful in its wildness. By late afternoon, we reached the place where we were to leave our jeep and proceed on foot. We changed into our hiking gear, shouldered our heavy backpacks, and with one last look at the tiny beacon of man-made object in the midst of sprawling nature, we began our trek. The hike was grueling, the terrain was challenging, the backpacks heavy, and the air, though pure, was thinner. 
We often had to stop to catch our breath, our city-dwelling bodies struggling to adjust to the new conditions. But every time we felt the strain, we had only to look around us. The emerald green foliage, the rocky outcrops, the endless sky above, all untouched and beautifully wild, to know it was worth every exhausting step. Finally, as the sun began to dip behind the towering peaks, we reached our camping spot. It was a small clearing, surrounded by towering trees, and a beautiful view of the valley stretched out in front. But as we started setting up our tent, a strange sensation pricked at the back of my mind. It felt as if the forest held its breath, as if we were being watched. I shook off the unsettling feeling, attributing it to fatigue and the vast, unfamiliar surroundings. That night, under the cloak of a billion stars, with the soothing sounds of the wilderness around us, we felt truly alive. Little did we know what lay ahead. Little did we understand what it truly meant to be, not just in the wilderness, but part of it. After a restless night, we woke to the crisp chill of dawn. Birds sang their morning songs from the treetops, their voices echoing in the stillness. The forest seemed to be shaking off its night's sleep, just like us. It was surreal, almost dreamlike. We were here, miles away from the confines of our city life, ready to embrace the untamed wilderness. We spent the morning exploring the surrounding areas, familiarizing ourselves with our temporary home. The scenery was beyond anything I'd expected, untouched, wild, and achingly beautiful. Emily and I exchanged glances that carried an unspoken sense of awe. For lunch, we managed to cook a simple meal on our camping stove. The food tasted different, more vibrant under the open sky. By afternoon, we had established a rhythm. We trekked around the area, marveling at the flora and fauna, the hidden streams, the monumental trees. We were but tiny specks in this vast panorama of nature, humbled by its majesty. As evening approached, we made our way back to the camp, our bodies aching but our spirits soaring. As we set about making dinner, an eerie sense of unease crept over me. It was a feeling I couldn't quite shake off, the forest seemed to close in on us, the sounds seemed to grow quieter, and the shadows seemed to stretch just a little too far. It was as though we were being observed, watched by unseen eyes. While Emily stirred our dinner on the camping stove, I looked around, trying to source the origin of my discomfort. I found nothing out of the ordinary, just the untamed wilderness in its evening shroud. Was it the isolation? The silence? I couldn't put my finger on it. I brushed off the uneasiness, attributing it to the vast wilderness and the distant howl of an animal. Just as we were about to tuck into our meal, a strange light caught my eye. Emily followed my gaze and froze. Up in the sky, something was moving. At first glance, it looked like a plane or maybe a drone, but the more we watched, the less it made sense. It was zipping across the sky at an incredible speed. The movements were too sharp, too fast for any man-made craft. A chill ran down my spine as I watched, the strange sensation of being watched returning with a vengeance. The light eventually retreated and disappeared, leaving us with our uneaten dinner and a rising sense of dread. Trying to keep our fears at bay, we decided to go to bed early. As I lay there in the silence of our tent, the strange light and the unsettling feeling of being observed replayed in my mind, making sleep a distant dream. The first day, filled with so much promise and excitement, ended on a note of unease. As I finally fell into a fitful sleep, I couldn't help but feel a strange sense of foreboding. The wilderness, once a place of beauty and serenity, was slowly morphing into a place of uncertainty and fear. We were far from home, far from help, enveloped in a world that seemed to watch our every move. Awaking with a start, I found Emily already up, her face pale in the morning light filtering into our tent. We barely spoke as we prepared our breakfast, the echoes of last night's eerie spectacle still resonating in our minds. Trying to dispel the unease, we busied ourselves with plans for the day, exploring further into the forest, gathering firewood, and maybe even trying our hand at some wilderness photography. As the sun climbed higher and its rays filtered through the verdant canopy, warming our campsite, we felt a bit of the previous day's fear recede. Perhaps it was just our city-dwelling minds playing tricks on us, making mountains out of molehills, or so we wanted to believe. The day passed uneventfully. We hiked through the dense forest, 
gazed in awe at the wildlife we encountered and marveled at the grandeur of nature. The ever-changing landscape of the Pacific Northwest was a sight to behold, yet underlying the beauty was a gnawing apprehension, a prickling sense of unease that we couldn't quite shake off. Night fell quicker than expected. As darkness wrapped around us, the comforting noises of the forest were replaced by an eerie silence. It was a silence that gnawed at our nerves, filled the space around us, and seemed to amplify the solitude of our situation. As we cooked dinner under the vast open sky, our only source of light the dim flicker of our camping stove, I found myself constantly glancing upwards, half expecting the strange light to appear again. And then it did. Our dinner was forgotten as we stared at the inexplicable light that was now darting across the sky in impossible maneuvers. This time it was closer, its movements more erratic. It wasn't just a light, it was a craft of some sort, defying all laws of physics we knew. The sight was mesmerizing and terrifying at the same time. A chill washed over us as the lights flickered and danced, as if playing a twisted game. Our previous rationale of it being an aircraft or drone was quickly discarded. This was something else, something we couldn't understand or explain. Eventually the light retreated, leaving a disquieting darkness in its wake. With our appetites lost, we turned in for the night, the sounds of the wilderness suddenly taking on an ominous tone. In the silence of our tent, we lay awake, our minds echoing with unspoken fear. Every rustle, every distant howl seemed magnified, adding to our growing anxiety. I kept my ears strained, trying to pick out any anomaly, any sign of the unknown entity that had so mercilessly invaded our peaceful retreat. Emily, I knew, was doing the same. As the longest night of our lives wore on, we held on to each other, drawing courage from our shared terror. Sleep seemed an alien concept, replaced instead by a vigilant watchfulness. We were no longer just campers in the wilderness. We felt like intruders in a realm that was far beyond our comprehension. The first night of our supposed relaxing getaway was turning out to be a surreal nightmare, filled with inexplicable lights and an overpowering sense of dread. Little did we know it was just the beginning. We woke to the chirping of birds and the soft rustle of leaves. The eerie events of the previous night seemed like a far-off dream in the light of the day. However, the unspoken apprehension was palpable as we went about our morning routine. Breakfast was a silent affair, with our minds still replaying the strange spectacle in the sky. We spent the day exploring the untamed beauty around us. The forests of the Pacific Northwest were enchanting in their raw, untouched glory. The air was fresh, the views spectacular, and the sense of being one with nature was both uplifting and sobering. Yet the magic of the day did little to erase the fear that had settled in the pit of our stomachs. As the day gave way to night, a sense of foreboding took over. Despite our apprehension, we tried to maintain a semblance of normalcy. We cooked dinner, spoke about the day's discoveries, and laughed at our own city-dweller confusions. But the undercurrent of fear was undeniable. The peace of the wild, which had once seemed so welcoming, now felt unsettling. The forest, once a symbol of nature's grandeur, had become a vast, daunting entity. As the darkness enveloped us, we watched the sky, waiting. It didn't take long for the strange lights to reappear. Their movements were even more erratic this time, the speed astounding. The lights darted across the sky, changing direction mid-flight, diving, soaring, and zipping around in ways that defied logic. The sight was terrifying, not just because of its inexplicability, but because of the underlying sense of intelligence it conveyed. It was as if the lights were aware of us, watching us, studying us. The thought was chilling. We were in the middle of nowhere, at the mercy of a phenomenon we could not comprehend or explain. In our city lives, we had always been in control. We had schedules, routines, and structures, but out here we were stripped of that control. The wilderness was in command, and it seemed to be housing entities far beyond our understanding. After what seemed like hours, the lights finally retreated, leaving an oppressive darkness in their wake. We retired to our tent, the once comforting shelter now feeling like a flimsy barrier against the unknown. Sleep was elusive. Every sound seemed magnified. Every shadow seemed to harbor a threat. I found myself straining to hear any unusual noise, to discern any abnormal movement. The peace and solitude of the wilderness had morphed into a canvas of terror. 
Emily was equally restless. I could feel her tense body next to mine, her silent fear a mirror of my own. I wanted to offer her some comfort, some assurance, but I had none to give. We were both out of our depth, trapped in an enigma that was rapidly turning our adventure into a nightmare. As the second night in the wilderness came to an end, the sense of dread was impossible to ignore. What was supposed to be a retreat had turned into an ordeal, a test of our courage and resilience. We had come here seeking adventure and connection with nature. Instead, we were grappling with fear and the terrifying unknown. Morning came as a relief, the warmth of the sunlight pushing away the fear of the night. We busied ourselves with our camping chores, trying to reclaim some sense of normalcy. Our breakfast was a quiet affair, our minds still reeling from the inexplicable occurrences of the last few nights. We spent the day in an attempt to distract ourselves. We ventured further into the forest, marveled at the flora and fauna, and admired the beauty that surrounded us. The Pacific Northwest was breathtaking in its grandeur. Yet, beneath the awe and wonder, the unsettling feeling persisted, a dark cloud on a sunny day. Night fell, and with it, the familiar sense of dread. As we prepared dinner, the anticipation was almost unbearable. Our eyes kept straying to the sky, waiting for the ominous lights to appear. Sure enough, they did. Their erratic movements seemed more aggressive, more purposeful than before. The lights zipped across the sky, darting and weaving, performing gravity-defying maneuvers that left us in awe and terror. We could only watch in silence, the stunning spectacle rendering us speechless. Then, as if the visual spectacle wasn't enough, a strange pulsing sound echoed through the forest. It was a low rhythmic hum, vibrating through the air, pulsating in sync with our mounting fear. The trees rustled as if acknowledging the sound, adding to the eerie orchestra of the night. Our dinner lay forgotten as we strained our ears to decipher the mysterious sound. It was unlike anything we had ever heard. Not a creature, not the wind, but something entirely different. It seemed to resonate from every direction, engulfing us in a symphony of unease. The pulsing sound, the bizarre lights, the sense of being watched, it was all too much. We were miles away from civilization, alone amidst an unknown phenomenon that was playing out right before our eyes. We retreated to the safety of our tent, our hearts pounding in our chests. The once familiar shelter now felt like a flimsy barricade against the unknown. We lay there, side by side, holding our breath, clinging to each other, and praying for the night to pass. The silence of the wilderness was shattered by the pulsating hum and the rustling trees. It was as if the forest itself was alive, whispering secrets we were not meant to understand. The fear was palpable, a living entity that seemed to feed off the darkness and the unknown. As we lay awake, the terrifying truth began to sink in. We were not alone. The realization was chilling, our journey into the wilderness, once filled with anticipation and adventure, had taken a turn into the realm of the unknown. With the break of dawn, the strange sounds faded away and the forest returned to its peaceful serenity. But the terror of the night had taken its toll. We were tired, scared, and desperately longing for the safety of our familiar city life. Our peaceful retreat had turned into a terrifying ordeal. We were in the heart of the wilderness, confronting an unknown entity that seemed to defy all logic. And the worst part, we were entirely at its mercy. In the cool light of the morning, the haunting events of the night seemed almost like a surreal dream. Yet the sense of unease was too real, the imprint of terror too deep. We started the day in silence, each lost in their own thoughts, wrestling with the inexplicable experiences of the past few nights. Our morning routine felt like an attempt to regain some control over our situation. The simple tasks of preparing breakfast and cleaning up gave us a semblance of normalcy, a respite from the growing fear. Yet beneath our forced calmness, we were both unnerved, waiting for the next inexplicable event. And it came sooner than we anticipated. As we stepped out of our tent, a sight awaited us that sent chills down our spine. Our camping equipment, which we had left haphazardly around the campsite, was stacked into a perfect tower. It was an uncanny sight, almost artistic in its precision and symmetry. The food we had hung in a tree, out of the reach of wild animals, was placed at the top of the stack. The perfect positioning, the deliberate arrangement. 
It all suggested an intelligence that was both intriguing and terrifying. We stood there frozen, staring at the bizarre sight. The forest, in all its magnificent grandeur, was now a stage for an unfathomable drama that we were part of. We were no longer just campers. We felt like actors in a play, directed by unseen entities. Who could have done this? A person? But we were miles away from any human habitation. An animal? But no animal could create such a meticulously balanced structure. The unsettling realization was unavoidable. We were not alone. We spent the day in a daze trying to make sense of it all. Our journey, which had started as an adventure, was rapidly turning into a horror story. The peacefulness of the wilderness had given way to an ominous mystery, the tranquility replaced by a pulsating fear. The strange lights, the pulsing sound, the meticulous arrangement of our equipment, it all pointed towards a terrifying presence, a formidable entity that was far beyond our comprehension. We were facing an unknown threat in an unfamiliar environment, and it was overwhelming. As the sun began to set, our fear intensified. The anticipation of the night, of what might come next, was terrifying. The towering stack of our equipment stood as a stark reminder of the inexplicable phenomena we were confronting. We retired to our tent, our makeshift fortress against the unknown. As darkness fell, we lay in each other's arms, silently praying for the night to pass. The forest seemed to hold its breath, as if waiting for the next act in this haunting drama. Our peaceful retreat had turned into a nightmare. The Pacific Northwest, in all its wild beauty, had revealed a terrifying secret, pushing us to the edge of our sanity. Our dreams of a serene escape were replaced by a desperate longing for the familiar chaos of city life. But for now, we were trapped in this terrifying wilderness, grappling with an enigma that was rapidly escalating into a threat. We awoke to a morning that offered no solace. The stack of our camping gear stood ominously, a chilling monument to our mounting fear. Breakfast was a quiet affair, our appetite lost to the strangeness of our situation. The wilderness that once held promises of adventure now served a chilling mystery. Our decision was unanimous. It was time to leave. We began to dismantle the eerie tower, each piece of equipment a reminder of the uncanny precision with which it had been stacked. The eeriness of the task made our skin crawl, and we worked in tense silence, eager to finish and start our trek back to the jeep. The trail back was challenging, the beautiful scenery now tainted by our fear. We walked faster, driven by an urgency to leave the wilderness behind. But the forest, it seemed, had other plans. Despite our familiarity with the trail, we seemed to be getting nowhere. Landmarks we thought we recognized appeared again, leading us back to the same spots. The feeling was maddening, the forest a labyrinth from which there was no escape. We were walking in circles, trapped in a nightmarish loop. Our frustration grew with each passing hour, but so did our determination. We were resolved to escape this terrifying trap. However, the wilderness seemed to mock our efforts. The forest, in its expansive grandeur, was a maze, its secrets well guarded and unforgiving. As the hours passed, we realized the bitter truth. We were lost. The trail that had led us into this wilderness was eluding us, cloaking itself within the vastness of the forest. The forest, once our playground, was now our prison. As night began to fall, we felt the familiar knot of fear in our stomachs. We were forced to camp again, to face another night of the unknown. We were out of food, exhausted and scared. The grandeur of the wilderness seemed to shrink us, its unfathomable depths a stark reminder of our insignificance. We huddled in our tent, the small space a weak barrier against the all-encompassing darkness outside. We listened to the sounds of the forest, each rustle, each hoot amplifying our anxiety. The thought of the lights returning, of the pulsing sound echoing through the darkness was terrifying. We lay there, waiting for the dawn, our fears and worries the only company in the suffocating silence. We were prisoners in the wilderness, victims of a phenomenon that defied all logic and understanding. We were at the mercy of the unknown, and it was a chilling realization. The night was long, the minutes stretching into hours as we listened to the haunting symphony of the wilderness. Our dreams of an adventurous retreat were replaced by a singular desire to escape, to return to our familiar city life. As the sky began to lighten, 
We clung to the hope of finding our way back, but the fear remained, a relentless companion in our nightmarish ordeal. The forest was no longer a retreat, but a daunting mystery we were desperate to escape from. It was an exodus, a desperate journey to escape the terrifying enigma of the Pacific Northwest. The darkness was our shroud, our companion in the isolating vastness of the wilderness. Our tent was our refuge, a flimsy barrier against the uncertainties lurking outside. The forest seemed to hold its breath, awaiting the next act in our harrowing saga. Sleep eluded us. We lay awake, entwined in each other's arms, our heartbeats a shared rhythm against the pulsing fear. The anticipation of the unknown was an unbearable burden, a torment that kept our senses on high alert. Suddenly, a brilliant light pierced through the canvas of our tent, casting long shadows that danced with every rustle of the wind. It was a blinding white light, an unnatural illumination that seemed to defy the darkness of the wilderness. We froze, the shock gripping us in its paralyzing hold. With trembling hands, I reached out to the zipper of the tent. My fingers were numb with fear, my heart pounding in my chest. The light was so bright that it was almost tangible, a glowing entity that seemed to dominate the entire forest. Slowly I pulled back the flap of the tent. What met our eyes was a sight that was as terrifying as it was fascinating. Two humanoid figures stood near our camping gear, their bodies bathed in the glowing light. Their features were barely discernible, but their large black eyes were as clear as the terror that gripped us. They seemed to be communicating, a soft clicking sound filling the air. It was a strange sound, alien and rhythmic, adding to the eerie atmosphere. It seemed to echo the pulsating fear that was threatening to consume us. As we watched, frozen in our tent, the creatures inspected our camping equipment. Their movements were swift, calculated, their interest in our possessions both intriguing and disturbing. The bizarre sight was a chilling testament to the reality of our situation. Suddenly, a light drizzle began to fall. The soft pitter-patter against the canvas of our tent seemed to heighten the strangeness of the encounter. It was as if the forest was adding its own soundtrack to the unnerving drama unfolding before us. Then, as suddenly as they had appeared, the figures vanished. The light faded, leaving behind a profound darkness that seemed to engulf the entire forest. We were left in our tent, the shock of the encounter freezing us in place. We were petrified, our minds struggling to comprehend what we had witnessed. The forest was silent once again, the only sound being the falling rain against our tent. The encounter had left us shaken, the reality of our situation sinking in with terrifying clarity. As the rain eased, we were left in a daze, the night's events a horrifying memory that was all too real. Our fears had been validated, our worst nightmare coming true. We were not alone, and the unknown was far more terrifying than we had imagined. As dawn broke, we were consumed by a desperate need to escape. The Pacific Northwest had revealed its secrets, unveiling a reality that was far beyond our comprehension. The wilderness was no longer a retreat, but a terrifying encounter with the unknown. Our resolve to leave had never been stronger. Dawn brought a respite from the terror of the night, its first light cutting through the dense foliage of the forest, making the spectral figures from the night before seem like a dreadful dream. But the imprint of the fear was too deep, the memories of the encounter too vivid for any amount of daylight to erase. We emerged from the tent, the haunting image of the humanoid figures still etched in our minds. Our camping equipment lay undisturbed, as if mocking our terrified reactions from the night before. The silence of the forest was eerie, a stark contrast to the mysterious clicking sounds we had heard. The memory of the humanoid figures inspecting our belongings sent a shiver down my spine. We packed our gear with trembling hands, the mundane task an attempt to regain some semblance of normalcy. The forest around us seemed to pulsate with a quiet menace, its calmness a facade hiding the unfathomable mysteries it held. Our hearts pounded in our chests as we set off again, eager to find the elusive trail. The quietness of the forest was oppressive, as if the very air was holding its breath, waiting for the next act of our horrifying saga to unfold. As we trudged along, we held on to each other, drawing strength from our shared fear. The only sounds were the crunching of dried leaves under our feet and our ragged breaths. Each rustling leaf, each bird call, seemed to echo our escalating terror. The forest seemed to close in on us, 
its towering trees casting long, menacing shadows. The wilderness, once a haven of tranquility and adventure, was now a maze of terror, its silence echoing the dread of our ordeal. Just when despair was beginning to creep in, there it was, a familiar landmark. Relief washed over us like a wave, almost knocking the breath out of us. We recognized a large, moss-covered boulder that we had passed on our way to the campsite. The sight of it brought a glimmer of hope, a beacon in our terrifying ordeal. We quickened our pace, driven by a renewed determination to escape. The forest seemed to recede, opening up a trail that was hidden in its depths. Our desperate prayers were finally answered. We were on the right track, making our way back to civilization, to safety. Our legs ached, our bodies screamed for rest, but we ignored the pain. We had one goal, to put as much distance between us and the camping site as possible. The memories of the encounter fueled our desperate flight, each step taking us further from the terrifying reality that the wilderness had revealed. As we moved away from the site of our terrifying ordeal, the forest began to lose its ominous aura. The trees seemed less menacing, the silence less threatening. The Pacific Northwest, in all its rugged beauty, was once again a wilderness, its secrets hidden behind a facade of tranquility. But the haunting memories of our encounter remained, casting long shadows that would forever taint our perception of the wilderness. As we fled towards the safety of our jeep, we made a silent vow. We would never speak of our ordeal, the memory too terrifying to revisit. The forest had shown us a glimpse of the unknown, a reality that was far too disturbing to confront. As we left the Pacific Northwest behind, we left a part of ourselves in its depths, a part that was forever changed by the encounter. With the familiarity of the trail now guiding us, the feeling of terror began to recede, replaced by a rush of adrenaline. The forest became a blur as we raced down the path, our lungs burning and our muscles aching with every step. Despite the exhaustion, we kept pushing. Every second that passed, every stride we took, was a step towards freedom. Our jeep was the symbol of our escape, a metallic beast that promised to take us away from the wilderness that had become a living nightmare. We didn't stop to rest. We couldn't. The image of the humanoid figures kept playing in our minds, their large black eyes staring into our souls. Every rustle of the leaves, every chirping bird was a cruel reminder of the terrifying night we had endured. As we neared the clearing where we had parked the jeep, relief surged through us. Our vehicle stood there, a comforting reminder of our world a world that didn't hold frightening mysteries or inexplicable phenomena. I fumbled for the keys in my pocket, my fingers shaking with exhaustion and relief. The sound of the engine roaring to life was the sweetest melody I had ever heard. As we drove away, the towering trees of the forest faded into the background, a chilling chapter of our lives concluding. The silence in the jeep was deafening. Our minds were a whirlwind of thoughts, each more terrifying than the last. The drive was a blur, the landscape slipping away as we left the wilderness behind. The only thing that mattered was the distance we were putting between ourselves and the forest. As the sun began to set, casting a golden hue on the landscape, the nightmare of the encounter began to feel distant. We were still shaking, our hearts pounding, but the safety of the jeep was a reassurance, a shell protecting us from the horrors we had experienced. We didn't speak a word during the entire drive. Our minds were filled with terrifying images, our hearts heavy with the fear of the unknown. The comforting hum of the engine was the only sound that filled the silence, a monotonous melody that kept the terror at bay. When we finally reached the safety of our home, the relief was overwhelming. The familiar sights and sounds were comforting, a reminder of our reality, a reality that didn't involve eerie lights or mysterious figures. We were home safe from the horrors that the wilderness held. But as we looked at each other, we knew our lives would never be the same. We had stared into the face of the unknown, and it had changed us forever. That night, as we lay in our bed, the silence of our home was a stark contrast to the pulsating fear of the forest. We held each other, our bodies trembling, our minds plagued with haunting memories. We knew we would never forget never escape the terrifying memory of our encounter. The Pacific Northwest, with its towering trees and vast wilderness, had given us a glimpse into the unknown, a glimpse that had changed our lives forever. We had escaped, but the terror was far from over. 
We were prisoners of our memories, haunted by a reality that defied all understanding. In the safety of our home, we struggled to find normality. The quiet hum of the city was a stark contrast to the eerie silence of the forest, yet it failed to ease the knot of anxiety in our stomachs. The comforts of civilization couldn't erase the terrifying memories etched deep into our minds. We made an unspoken pact to keep our ordeal a secret, to protect our loved ones from the terrifying reality we had experienced. The shared glances, the comforting squeezes, they were all acknowledgments of a story that was too incredible, too terrifying to recount. Yet the trauma of our experience lingered. The once mundane tasks now served as stark reminders of our encounter. Cooking dinner was a throwback to the lights in the sky, while the rustling of city life brought back chilling echoes of the eerie forest noises. Sleep was plagued by nightmares of large black eyes and strange clicking sounds. Even the comfort of each other's presence was a haunting reminder of the terror we had shared. Every quiet moment, every hushed whisper was heavy with unspoken words, memories we were both desperately trying to suppress. Our love, once a source of joy and comfort, had become a shared bond of a terrifying experience. As days turned into weeks, we attempted to reclaim our lives, but each day brought its own struggle, the mundane routine a challenging feat. We sought solace in the familiar, the ordinary providing a semblance of control over the terror that lingered just below the surface. Despite the difficulty, we kept our promise. We never discussed the encounter, never hinted at the mystery of the Pacific Northwest. Our silence was our shared burden, a weight we carried with stoic resilience. We became experts at suppressing the memories, at avoiding the triggers that brought the terrifying ordeal rushing back. At night, we would often find ourselves gazing at the stars, the twinkling lights a cruel reminder of the mysterious phenomena we had witnessed. The vast expanse of the night sky, once a source of wonder and fascination, was now a canvas of haunting memories, its mysteries a frightening reality we had experienced firsthand. In these quiet moments, we found comfort in each other's presence. We held hands, our fingers entwined, as we silently acknowledged the unspeakable terror we had lived. We shared long, comforting embraces, our mutual silence a testament to the bond that had grown stronger in the face of adversity. Our terrifying experience had created an unbreakable bond, a connection that was deeper than love, stronger than fear. It had changed us, made us stronger, more resilient. We were survivors, warriors who had stared into the face of the unknown and lived to tell the tale. But we chose to stay silent, our tale too terrifying to recount. It was our secret, a chapter of our lives we chose to bury in the depths of our memory. As we gazed at the night sky, we made a silent promise to each other. We would not let the terror define us, would not let it tarnish our love. We would live our lives, cherish our love, and let the memories fade into the background. The Pacific Northwest, with its mysterious lights and humanoid figures, would remain a closed chapter, a secret we would carry to our graves. In the aftermath of our experience, life slowly, painstakingly regained some semblance of normalcy. The days turned into weeks, weeks into months, but the scars of our encounter in the Pacific Northwest remained etched in the shadows of our lives. The silence between us was heavy with the secret we bore, but in it, we found an unspoken strength, an unsaid pact that bound us closer. The terror had retreated, but it had left in its wake a profound sense of bewilderment. We had confronted the unknown and emerged from it irrevocably changed. Every crack of dawn, every setting sun, was a stark reminder of the terrifying events we had experienced. The night sky, once a source of wonder and fascination, had become a silent antagonist, its twinkling stars mimicking the spectral lights of our encounter. Yet sometimes when we gathered the courage to venture out into the stillness of the night, we would look up at the heavens, the echo of our questions disappearing into the abyss of the universe. Were we alone? Or was there something else, something beyond our comprehension, sharing this universe with us? These questions haunted us, their answers locked away in the silent depths of the Pacific Northwest. Yet, in this quest for answers, we found a sense of acceptance. We realized that the universe was a vast expanse, teeming with mysteries that were beyond our understanding. We decided to embrace the uncertainty, 
to live with the unanswered questions and to move on from the terrifying ordeal. Our secret remained safe, locked away in the depths of our hearts, an unspoken chapter in the book of our lives. We never spoke about the strange lights or the humanoid figures. Even the word camping was erased from our vocabulary, its mention too painful, its memories too haunting. In our decision to stay silent, we found solace. Our silence was not born out of fear, but out of acceptance. It was our way of coping, our method of surviving. The terrifying encounter in the Pacific Northwest had changed us, but it hadn't defeated us. We learned to cherish the mundane, to find joy in the ordinary. The simple act of waking up to a new day, of feeling the warmth of the sun, of listening to the gentle hum of city life. These became our treasures, our lifelines. And so we lived, with the memories of our encounter fading into the background. The haunting echoes of our experience in the Pacific Northwest lingered, but they no longer defined us. We had faced the unknown, survived its terror, and emerged stronger. As I pen down these words, the final chapter of our ordeal, I can't help but look up at the sky. The stars twinkle, innocent and beautiful, oblivious of the terror they had once evoked. We never found the answers to our questions, and perhaps we never will. But in the mystery, in the unanswered echoes, we found our strength, our resilience. This story ends here, with a couple who faced the unknown and lived to tell the tale. A tale they chose to bury, a secret they chose to keep. We look up at the sky sometimes, our hearts filled with unanswered questions. But we don't seek answers anymore. We simply gaze, lost in the beauty of the universe. A universe that holds mysteries beyond our understanding. A universe we respect, fear, but most importantly, continue to marvel at.